We are seeing you for the first time since you left <coughs> Memphis. Is that the way to say it? Since Memphis let you go? What's the like nice, <laughs> nice way to say that? Is there like a, is there a, um, we, were you, I just have to straight up ask, were you as shocked as the rest of us? Because we were, Tracy and I were Very. shocked. The world was shocked. The world was shocked. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is the business we've chosen. And so, you know, we were struggling, uh, had lost eight in a row. Uh, you know, after having a great start and, uh, you know, we were really battling and I was more dug into the film and trying to get our team to win games uh, more than worrying about my job. And so, uh, you know, they had to do what they had to do and they felt like they needed to do that. And uh, I only wish them the best. Well, that's bogus. Yeah. <laughs> Come they on, had, they had, That's bogus. They had to do what they had to do because last year you came in, you'd done a phenomenal job of changing the culture around and that's what you were trying to do. And you did that. Now, it's hard to coach a team in the NBA when you have your best players. Yeah. But when you without your leader, your best player, Mike Conley, it's tough to win games. Oh, I missed him now. <laughs> of course you missed him. I mean, Are you kidding me? He's the guy was having a phenomenal yeah. season. He's an underrated point guard in this league. So when you don't have that out there orchestrating your offense, it's tough to go out night in and night well, out. Can we just blame Mike games. Conley for all of this and leave it at <laughs> So it's what was the fault. draw? What was the final straw? Yes, you lost games, but Everybody loses games, especially when you don't have your best player. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, at this, like I said, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm a big boy. And, uh, you know, I, I know going into this that, that that's always a chance that you can be fired. And, look, it's, some great coaches have been fired in this league, which I got to talk to a lot of them after it happened to me. And, and they all gave me uh, incredible votes of confidence and, and great advice on, um, you know, how to, how to move forward. And, I got some great invites to come out and learn, mm. which is awesome, which you guys know how I am. I'm always trying to learn something new. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is right now, and I'm just moving forward. From I like the PC, Rachel. I like, I like the PC. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about who reached out to you because you got so many tweets. I mean, that's another thing. We yeah. were surprised. Yeah. But you had so many current players immediately the reached back. out, the hat have your back. back. LeBron James, I need some answers. Feels like my man was a fall guy. You had Dwayne Wade, of course, also with you in Miami. But you also had players who, by the way, you've never even coached. David yeah. Lillard came out saying, what happened here? This doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, and that meant a lot to me. I mean, you know, when you get that kind of response, uh, it means that you have had some impact. And that's, you know, and when you're doing this job, that's what you want to look back on and say that you, you had an impact. And so, you know, one day my kids will see that LeBron James stepped up <laughs> for me uh, when I lost my job. And, and you know, D. Lillard is a, is a first class kid. You know, I got to coach him in the rookie game. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to talk actually, um, you know, when we played them uh, earlier in the year. And I just told him, man, you are one of my favorites to watch. You carry yourself the best. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, what he did for his coach, Terry Stotts. Yep. Uh, uh, on Twitter that time when everybody was going after Terry. I mean, that just, uh, it just shows you, you know, what kind of guy he is. And, uh, you know, so it felt good going, you know, getting that kind of response. But I don't like being here with you guys either. Well, so I, I want to get back on that <laughs> sideline. I like visiting on an off day as opposed to this. I don't think this will be your job for long in the media or visiting other <clears> teams. <throat> Have you thought a little bit about what kind of job you want next, what you want from your next job, what kind of situation you want to be in? I don't know how picky I can be. Uh, <laughs> you know, I really just want to get back on that sideline and take what I learned from this last situation and really try to apply it. Um, you know, to the next organization. And, you know, um, I, I'm not faultless in all of this stuff. I don't want to sit here and act like that. So I, I have my mistakes that I made and things that I want to grow from and learn. So whatever kind of team that is, whether it's a contender or a team trying to become a contender or a young team trying to develop, um, you know, I'm ready to face it all. Well, we won't pepper you too much. I do want to ask you about Marcus Gasol just because there have been so many reports since your departure about a rift being between you, that you guys didn't talk that much or that he didn't like you very much. When no. you hear all of that, what can you tell us about your relationship with him? That's, that's the league. I mean, the best player and the coach aren't always going to get along. And, you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. And, uh, you know, he was the best player on teams, and I'm sure he didn't always love his coach. You know, it was just unfortunate circumstances how it all played out on the stage. Um, but th that's just normal stuff. And, um, you know, whether we like each other or not is not about that. It's about winning games, and it's about us working hard I, together that's what you, that's, to get W. You said it right there. It's about winning games. Y'all won yeah. games the previous year. So, yeah. no. Yeah, I had some run-ins with my coaches, but at the end of the day, <laughs> we, we were winning games. <laughs> and I'm not going to get rid of a coach that's helping me win ball games. I'm curious about that dynamic overall, and this is not about your situation. Yeah. I just want your insight and in, in the big picture, because we were talking last week with Chauncey Billups about the situation in Oklahoma City. And you and Chauncey 
Chauncey were saying to me, oh, Billy Donovan's got to do this. Mm -hmm. He's got to tell Melo that. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, look what happened in Memphis. <laughs> Fizz is trying to make some changes. Yeah. Some of the players push back, and it's not always so easy. We know who wins when there's those showdowns. What is a coach supposed to do? Well, we also assuming that he's not saying that. Like, he may be coaching the heck out of that team behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. We don't know what he's telling mm -hmm. Carmelo. We assume because certain things aren't happening. Correct. And, and evolving at the pace that we'd all like to see it. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the same thing they were saying about Spo. Right. In the first year of the Big Three, we yep. were eight and nine, and oh my God, yep. he can't coach the team and fire him and bring Pat back to the team. And all of that was going on. But behind closed doors, Spo was grinding. He was doing the right things. He was coaching the heck out of that team. And, you know, the front office recognized that. Pat recognized that and encouraged him to just keep going. And we ended up winning 22 out of 23. So this team is just one of those runs away from everybody shutting up and just letting this team, you know, take their, take their place in the NBA. Do you think that's the key then, that the coach has to be <clears throat> backing the front office sort of ahead of time to go at a star player or at least oh, tell sure. him something he can't do? You, you have to have a full organizational support from that standpoint. You just do because, um, you know, we, we, we understand this. this is a player's league. And um, I'm, I'm not naive to that. I don't think any coach, I don't think Billy's naive to that. Um, so at the same time, he, but if he has that support, so if a player does feel that disgruntled and feels like he can go over him uh, to get things done, then he's going to lose that battle. But if the organization tells that player, go back in that locker room, shut up, and listen to the coach, that's going to send a big message to him. That certainly was the messaging from the top, not in any specific <coughs> incident, but from the top in Miami. I remember oh, Pat, Pat was very strong around. and said, yeah. Eric Spolster is your coach. He's going to be your coach all season. Enjoy. It worked out pretty good. <laughs> it, worked out, it worked out okay. <laughs>